Yay. Hi, you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining. I'm going to give people a chance to come on. I'm also going to be going live in the Wusa Sister Circle page. Hey, Miss Oz, how you doing? I'm just giving people a chance to come on. Yeah, so I'm going live in the Wusa Sister Circle page as well as my personal Facebook page. Hey, Sister Linda, how you doing? So I'm going to give people a little bit of time to come on for those um, who do not know me while we're waiting. My name is Coach Rhonda. Hey, Kanji. So again, I'll be talking to you guys here and also to my Wusa Sisters. Um, if you are not a part of the Wusa Sister Circle page, you can go to my website that's at www.rondasbarnes.org in order to sign up to be a part of the Wusa Sister Circle. That will be um, where I transition in uh, January to doing a lot of my scopes and a lot of my live videos. But um, also, just a little fun fact, um, I will be re-releasing two of my interactive journals in January. Uh, the first one is Let the Rivers of Living Water Flow. That is an interactive journal that helps you hear the voice of the Lord. So it gives you um, little activities to uh, activate your ear so that you can hear the voice of the Lord. Also, um, my breakthrough journal is called Once and For All Breakthrough Journal. Hey, Miss Wiggins, how you doing? And that is also an interactive journal that allows you to, it kind of walks you through the steps and processes so that you can get breakthrough in whatever area that you're struggling with. Um, so I'm excited about those two. And I also have a course that I will be releasing in the end of February. But we will talk about that a little bit more shortly as well. So to get started, what I want to talk about today, which I kind of talked about it um, last week. But we're going to talk about overcoming your past. Hey, Kim. Love you. We're going to talk about overcoming your past, and I put during the holidays on purpose because this is the time where you go around family, and if you have worked really hard all year um, to do some changes, to set different boundaries, and to really grow and develop as a person, um, and you go around people who have not seen you in a while, you come across the I remember when people uh, that I remember when, whether it was I remember when you used to smoke, or I remember when you used to curse, or I remember when you used to do whatever. Um, and so how do you deal with those types of people, but also how do you deal with uh, when people continue to confront your past and put it in your face? That's what we want to talk about. Um, and so just to give you a little outline of how this will go, I will give you a little bit of content. You are more than welcome to ask questions, um, or you can save your questions until the end. Um, and then we will pray because I do believe that as we enter into 2019, uh, that uh, the Lord wants to free us of these things so that we can really walk liberated into this new place that he's calling us to. So the very first thing I want to ask is why do you think it's so difficult for us as human beings, hey Jessica, how you doing, to overcome or to, to overcome our past, right? With what I do every day, I am a trainer and a coordinator. So what I do is I teach individuals who are considered to be the hardest to employ um, how to get a job and how to keep it. And the first half of what I do is really um, dealing with them, dealing with the internal issues, dealing with those things that hinder them from being successful. So that's life skills portion um, in the very beginning. And what I see is um, several things when it comes to our past and why we uh, struggle with overcoming it. And the one, one thing is guilt, okay? Um, everybody has a past. That's what we need to remember. Um, but a lot of people carry guilt, unnecessary guilt, um, from things that you have done in the past, from things that um, has happened, whether it was your fault or somebody else's fault. Um, we'll hold that guilt sometimes and wear it like a badge of honor. Um, we almost feel like it's wrong 
And if, if we release guilt from the past and begin to walk in the fullness of God, but um, it's not wrong. And we'll get into the tips of how to examine this thing too. Another reason um, why I've seen that people do not or struggle with overcoming guilt or overcoming their past is um, they're holding on to something, right? They're holding on to something in their past that they are connected to that gives them some sort of satisfaction. Yes, absolutely. Discussing guilt. Yes, Jessica, because let's take it back. I'm glad you said that. So when it comes to the guilt, um, like I said before, so for some reason, we feel as though if we, for, if we forgive ourselves or we forgive others, then um, we're wrong. It's usually when we have done something wrong, right? When we have made a mistake, done something wrong in the past, as believer, believers, if you are saved, when you ask for forgiveness, God forgives you immediately. And he puts you right back in right standing with him and you keep it moving. But we have been trained by society that if you make a mistake, then you have to reap. Okay, right? So let me go to the script. Um, I think it's in Galatians. Uh, the scripture says you reap what you sow. It really is a, a scripture, right? That talks about reaping, sowing and reaping. And I can remember having a conversation with my brother because he struggled with really letting go of the past. Things would happen, and he's like, oh, you know, um, he felt as though he had to hold these things. And I can remember asking him, okay, so the Bible does say that you reap what you sow, but how long do you expect to reap? Even, and I'm just stop right there, how long do you expect to reap from an offense? And I'm going to see if I can find the scripture because it's really important that we read it to get an understanding of what it is saying. Because when we don't, people can use this thing to keep us in bondage, which is not God's intent for us. Hold on one second. Galatians 6. So, yes, it is. It's Galatians 6. Let me find it really quick because uh, that was the main thing that kept ringing in my ear even when I was thinking about it. When we, we hold on to the past and, and it, um, people use it because that reap, you know how people say you reap what you sow when you've done them wrong. When you, when you hurt them or you, you've uh, hurt their feelings, first thing they say, you're going to reap what you sow. God don't like ugly. I used to say that. I'm just saying. That's why I know. <laughs> Sorry, but they say you reap what you sow, which is true. But, but again, how often or how long are you going to reap the harvest of whatever that thing is that you did? When you ask for repentance, where does the grace come in? God gives us grace, grace and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. So if God gives us grace and mercy, why do we struggle to give that grace and mercy to ourselves? <laughs> Yeah, listen, I don't even believe a, someone in the Wusa sister circle said karma. You know, even with that, that's, that principle, because sowing and reaping is a principle. So that principle of sowing and reaping, it is what it is. However, um, in Galatians, I'm going to read the scripture so that we can have clarity of what that you reap what you sow is. Okay? So it says, uh, it's Galatians 6, and I'm going to read 7 through 10 it says do not be deceived god is not mocked for whatever a man sows that he will also reap for he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption okay um but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life and let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. So yes, the Bible does say you will reap what you sow. However, if you think about even a farmer, right? A farmer will reap a harvest on a crop, right? And the harvest may be big. However, that harvest ends 
And he has to turn right back around and start reaping again. And so people will use you reap what you sow as a way to keep you in their sphere of bondage. But if they say God don't like ugly, he don't like ugly because that's not God. So how this process works, um, when the scripture says that um, for he who sows of his flesh will, well, for he will of the flesh reap corruption, corruption. But he who sows of the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, we will reap if we faint, if we do not lose heart. So why did they say that? Because God is not slow. That's number one. He is not slow. He didn't wake up yesterday. He's not crazy. He knows that everybody in some capacity within their life is going to make a mistake. Sometimes you might do it on purpose. That's why Jesus died. Jesus died on the cross to cover all of that. So every sin that you will ever commit was nailed to the cross with Jesus when he died. And when he died. He rose again to put us right back in right sin with Jesus. And now we have grace. We are seated at the right hand of the Father. So, because God is intentional, he sent his son to cover every mistake that you would ever make, right? So, even when you make a mistake, he's so good that he set principles in place so that even with that bad, depending on what you sow, you will reap it. So, that's why you don't lose heart. So, think about it this way. You've been doing bad for a real long time, for a really long time, right? you just been like, I don't know, whatever. You've been doing bad or you've been making mistakes. You've been doing things that you are not proud of for an extended period of time. But the Lord starts dealing with your heart, and now you know this is not something that you want to do. It needs to change. How can I change it? What do I need to do? And so the Lord starts talking to you and start dealing with you, and now as you move, he begins to highlight things that may not necessarily be good and starts giving you wisdom and how to adjust them, right? So now you're adjusting and you're adjusting, but you're going around people or you're seeing people who remember when you were okay with doing all of those bad things or the things that you struggle with. They don't see the behind the scenes work that God is doing within you, right? And so sometimes that can cause you to get discouraged. That's why it says, don't be weary and well doing because you will reap if you faint not. So sometimes it may make you discouraged when people only see you through old lenses because that's really what it is. They're not looking at you for who you are and where you are right now. They're seeing you through old lenses. However, the more you sow into good, the more you sow into the spirit, the more you sow into doing those things that are edifying and are good, you will eventually drown out or you will eventually switch the harvest to where you may have been going through a season where you were reaping negative things based off of actions or things that you had sown. However, as you go and the more you plant, the more you plant, the more you will begin to reap the good seeds of what you have begun to plant. So if you faint not, just because you don't see anything right this second does not mean that there will not be a result. The more you operate and the more you move, the more you will begin to see the good fruit. So when you begin to see the good fruit and you're good and everything, you're going and you're moving and everything is awesome. And then you go around somebody and they say, you know what? Um, let's go to the club. And you're like, mm, no, I don't club anymore. Girl, I remember when. How, what do you do? What do you do at that point? Because you're in that process of change. You're in that process of change. And sometimes it can be difficult. Uh, so you're in that process of change. You want to do good. What do you do? <laughs> I know that's right, Jessica. So what do you do? Okay. So I'm going to give you some tips, right? And within these tips, we're going to go a little bit deeper because a part of the reason why it's a struggle um, to really let go of that the things that we have done in the past is because we sometimes we have an undue attachment that needs to be broken in order for you to walk through that place. Yeah, I know, Rashad. I know that, Hollywood. So that's why I'm here. We're going to walk it through. So the first thing you need to do to overcome the past, and that, and, and this is all internal. 
It has to start with you because once you build yourself up, you'll have the courage to be able to set the boundaries to where either you're going to respect who I am now or you can set that boundary to where not cut them off because you don't have to cut everybody off. You're going to need people, but you can adjust the relationship in a way that it edifies you, but also brings wisdom and helps the other person watch from a distance sometimes so that they can see the change and be inspired as well. So you don't want to cut people off. So the first thing that you have to do is one, accept that you cannot change the past. I think a lot of times when we begin to, to walk in the changes or try to change or, or we're changing, um, our first reaction is to try to change what we've already done, right? So we try to go back and fix things that um, we already broke. I mean, they're broke. What you gonna do? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. I think it is good to acknowledge what you used to do. But yeah, see, listen, you go back. Exactly. And we're going to get into that too, Chloe. Chloe. But okay, so you go going. Number one, you can't fix the past. The past is in the past. It's already broken. It's already jacked up. The only thing that you can do is acknowledge, if need be, Acknowledge it, especially if there's somebody that was involved in whatever that thing is that may have been hurt or offended. There will be times where the Lord will take you, uh, have you go to them and say, look, I apologize. I was wrong. And this um, goes along with the forgiveness piece, which we'll get into. But there will be times where the Lord will have you go and right that wrong in terms of, you know, just validating. You know what? You're right. I did this and I apologize. Once that is done... Um, what else are you supposed to do, right? Unless the Lord sends you somewhere. So that's the first step. Just and realize you cannot change it. You cannot change what has already been done. The only thing that you can do is move from where you are forward. And that, right, lead by example. You can lead by example and you can try to be the light to those who are in darkness. However, you can't, you're not responsible for changing somebody's mind. You're not responsible for changing somebody's perspective. You're not responsible for changing anything but you. Anything else that needs to be done outside of that is between that person and the Lord. You just do the peace that God has you to do and you walk according to the best way that you know how to do. Um, the next step, now number one was, accept that you can't change the past. That's probably the hardest part for a lot of people. I know for men, it really is. Accept that you cannot change the past. You can only move from this point, because the past is already done, period. So you can only move forward. The second thing is examine truth versus fantasy. Examine truth versus fantasy. What do I mean by that? Sometimes when we look back on the past, when we don't want to let it go, we will look at the past through rose-colored glasses and create this vision of the past that is a lie. We will create, especially, and I'm going to go there, if you were in a relationship with somebody who you know when you was with them, they won't hit on two cents. None. But... Now, you know, you had that little space, and now you're looking on that past, and it's looking pretty good, and it's like, mm, but I remember when. I remember when. I remember when you need to cut it off. Because what the end, what would we'll look back on that past with those rose colored glasses and forget why we left. It's so important to safeguard. Yourself safeguard, your thoughts safeguard who you are so that you do not find yourself going backwards. You don't want to go backwards. So examine. If you start having those thoughts of drifting into the past of, you know, oh, I remember when I was with them and I remember this was going on and I remember that. Make sure you're examining. Examine the truth. It, what is the truth about the past? Even if you've made a mistake, even if you've done something wrong, examine that truth. What is the truth about this? Did you make a mistake? Okay, yes, that's what I did. But don't create... This huge, um, uh, 
this huge thing of, yeah, I made a mistake. And, and sometimes our minds will create it and make it so huge that we don't even feel like we deserve to get over it. We don't feel, we don't even believe that we deserve to move forward because in our mind, we have magnified what we have done so big that we almost feel like it's unforgivable. We almost feel like um, because of what we've done, this is not something that should be forgiven. Um, like I said, I remember talking with my brother um, about this very thing. And in his mind, and this, this is why I loved him, right? And he was so analytical in his thinking. So when I asked him how long was he supposed to reap, he had literally done the math based off of every offense that he had done when and and the offense times seven and he had created this whole timeline of how long he was supposed to go through difficulties in order for him to feel like he had served his time based off of the wrong that he felt like he had done and that is not logical that is not logical again even with a harvest right even with the harvest, a, a farmer will reap a harvest from the crops that he um, plants within a season. But he does not continuously reap from that same harvest. He might even get new seeds planted from that harvest. But that same one crop, he's not going to reap from that over and over again. So even when they say you reap what you sow, you're, you may reap a harvest, but this is not a continual lifelong thing. And at any point, you have the ability to shift and change how and what you reap by sowing good. Um, so just to recap, first tip, accept that you cannot change the past. Second tip, Examine truth versus fantasy. Only a look back at the truth through the lens of truth. Don't make things out to be 10 times worse than they really are. And don't minimize it um, or try to make it out to be something better than what it is. The past is just the past, period. Leave it at that. The third uh, tip to getting over the past is giving yourself permission to grieve uh, the past. Okay, so the past in some instances, especially when you have um, had this thought of what it should be, could be, or would be, right? So in your mind, um, you had this vision, right, of what your life was going to turn out to be, whether it's, we'll use a relationship. In your mind, you have this vision of how your life was supposed to be in this relationship, and you were supposed to live and be married. To be honest, I can, I'll be transparent. That's how it was when I was married. Uh, me and my ex-husband, we divorced. In my mind, because of how, um, I don't know, maybe society, I can't even really say that I was raised like this, but in my thought, in my mind, I thought, okay, yes, it was toxic, God honors marriage, we end up having to get a divorce, but eventually we're going to get back together, and we're going to be sitting in a rocking chair, rocking back and forth. That's what I thought. That was my thoughts of what I thought was going to happen. And so when he passed in 2016, um, I was like, what in the world? But there was still a part of me that was holding on and like I was angry with God because, um, yes, this relationship is in my past. However, this is something that I really thought was going to happen. And now I have to go on with my life knowing for a fact that this can never be. And so I had to give myself a chance to grieve my past. That was my past. Everything that was good, everything that was bad, everything that happened. Give your chance, yourself a chance to walk it through. Even when you make a mistake, give yourself a chance, a chance to walk through and grieve the past. It's okay to do that. It's okay to say, you know, uh, to be angry. Why did this have to happen? You don't stay there. But it's okay to examine.
examine it. Because when you go through and you examine it and you examine or you grieve those things that did not happen the way you thought it was. You grieve those things. Because sometimes we can be so connected to the past that it's difficult to let it go. Especially when the past was something that you saw as a part of your future. Then you have to let this piece of the past go in order to be able to see a new future. And if you can't see... Anything beyond that vision of what you have for the past, you're going to limit your ability to move forward in the future. So it is extremely important to be able to give yourself to uh, give yourself that chance to grieve what was so that you can accept what is. Give yourself that chance to grieve that that thing in the past that you thought would always be so that God can then open you up to that new thing that he's doing in this time and give you that opportunity to walk it through. So it's nothing wrong with grieving the past. It's something wrong with standing there forever. I will say that. But it's nothing wrong with giving yourself that space and that time to really, you know, grieve it. And I'm telling you, grieving the past is sometimes just like grieving someone who has, has died. Um, because you have to think about it in, in terms of you are literally letting go of a vision that you connected yourself with that you have to accept now will no longer be. And so that takes time. That takes a healing process. That takes you really getting in there with the Lord and saying, God, why sometimes? Um, it's not wrong for you to say that. But it's you being able to do that um, so that you can move on and move forward. These are things that will help you. When this person say, I remember when, you're going to be able to set your boundaries, ma'am and sir. <laughs> and it won't have no, you won't have a problem with it because you walk through these steps. So for those who are just getting on, I just want to recap again. Hey. Okay. So I got two more points. Sorry, somebody called. Um, I got two more points. Um, well, the first point was, one, accept that you cannot change the past. That's important. Number two, examine truth versus fantasy. Is this, look on your past with, through the lens of truth. Don't make it out to be something that uh, huge that, it, it, that you want it to be. And, and don't try to act like you're just the worst person ever. And you can never be forgiven. But that's because that's a lie. Um, number three, give yourself permission to grieve the past. Everybody has to go through that process where you let that past go. And that is a part of the grieving process. That's why a lot of times people will hold on to it hoping that it'll happen. Because sometimes you think about it like it's worse to let it go. But that's not the truth. Give yourself that permission, that time to really sit and grieve those things. So that you can be open to receive what God is trying to do in your life. Okay, so the fourth point, the fourth tip is to forgive yourself and to forgive others. That's almost self-explanatory. But I always like to use the example um, that Joyce Myers gives when it comes to unforgiveness. She says, unforgiveness is drinking poison. It's just like drinking poison waiting for the other person to die. Yeah, once you let it go, it really brings you strength. Absolutely, Chloe. Because when you choose not to forgive somebody who has hurt you in your past, um, you are literally weightless. I mean, unforgiveness causes sickness. Unforgiveness causes um, all types of diseases. You are miserable and angry. And this person is going on about their business. They could care less. Okay, just because you mad don't mean that they can feel your anger. Sometimes we get so angry and we just want to be vindicated so much that if you do not, like you will not get off the hook for this. But when you choose to forgive the person who has um, hurt you from your past, you are literally letting yourself off the hook. God is your vindicator. And I've seen it and will continue to see it over and over again. God loves his kids. So he's going to make sure he take care of us, period. And so you, some stuff you don't have to worry about. And when you allow yourself to submit to God, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and you say, you know what, Lord, I trust that whatever they did, you see it. I'm yours. 
I'm your child. You love me. You're concerned about the things that are concerned that concerns me. And when you believe that and you submit and you release it to the Lord, and what does that mean? You are literally letting this person off the hook from any responsibility where you are concerned. Why is that important? Because at the end of the day, you technically can't hold anybody responsible for anything. You can make their life miserable. You can cause them to be uh, frustrated or, or that type of thing. But as far as the accountability piece, you can't do that. That's not something that you can do. Um, and I hear people say that all the time. So if I, if I um, forgive them, then um, who going to hold them accountable? God does. Period. And the thing about it is when you choose to forgive them, when you choose to forgive and let it go, you will experience the deepest level of peace that you have ever experienced in your life. And I'm telling you from experience, um, you talking to somebody has that has probably, I mean, y'all too, but I'm telling you, experience some deep betrayal, some deep hurt, some, some deep things. And when I um, release them from any type of um accountability or vindication where i'm concerned i sleep good y'all i'm just saying i sleep really good i don't have any problems with anything um but it's a freeing feeling to be able to go around somebody and not feel anger to go around them and really not care and sometimes and the sad part is You'll see the person, because it's not so much that they don't know that they've done something. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's just, you should have just said something and you didn't. But but there are times that people know that they have done you wrong. Right. They know that they've done you wrong. They know they've done certain things right. And you're right. Sometimes they parents have controlled children. Sometimes you know all of these things. But when you um, forgive them and release them from any responsibility that they have um, of, of really being accountable to you and you submit them to the Lord, you'll see it every time. And the Lord will give you compassion on them. He will give you compassion and he will give you um, just a love. You'll be able to see them through the eyes of God um, because you chose to forgive. How do you forgive? You make the choice to. Forgiveness is not a feeling. Forgiveness is a choice. I choose to be free. And God, anywhere that there's unforgiveness in my heart, deal with it. Anywhere that I don't trust you. Hey, how you doing, Jackie? I ain't seen you in a long time. But anywhere that I don't feel like I... Listen, I have a problem. God, help me. But it's a choice. You have to choose to forgive. And that same thing... It really is a great gift. That same thing goes for... Yes, Lord, it does hurt... Um. Uh, Miss Wiggins, I'm talking to y'all in my sister circle group too, but same thing with yourself. Um, the Bible says that if we don't forgive others, God can't forgive us. And that includes you. You need to forgive you as well as others. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how you've done it. I don't care. Um, it doesn't matter if Jesus died on the cross for you. And he bore all your sins, everything that you would ever do. He took all of that on the cross and he died. And then you look at yourself like, oh, I'm a filthy rags. And I mean, I don't deserve to be forgiven. What does that say about what he did on the cross? What does that say about what Jesus did for you? Even before you knew that you were going to do anything that you did, he already knew because he created your destiny. He wrote the plans. For I know the plans I have for you, said the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you to give you hope in the future. So if he knows the plans, he knows whatever things that you've done in your past. He knows whatever things that you're going to do in your future. He knows it all. And so if he can forgive you and if he can get on the cross and if he can die, if he can do all of those things, why can you not do that for yourself? Why can you not give yourself the same grace that he gives to you? Because he like, I already done told him I love him. I don't know why they holding that stuff. I just want to wash them. I just want to wash them clean. That's it. When you ask God for forgiveness for whatever, then you have to do the last thing, the last tip that I'm going to tell you about. Once you go through all of these four, first four tips, you accept that you can't change the past. You examine the truth versus fantasy. 
You give yourself permission to grieve the past. You forgive yourself and others. Then you set your mind on things that are above. You set your mind on those things that are lovely, that are of good report. You set your mind on who God says you are. You set your mind on the promises that he's given to you. You set your mind on where you're going. And you began to pour into yourself those things will, that will continue to grow and develop you in that area that you want to be grow um that you want to be developed in. So you create the environment that you want to live in. And when anybody comes outside of that environment or attempted to bring something that does not coincide with that environment, you have every right to set the boundary to protect your environment, to protect you. You have that right. I don't care what mistake you've made in the past. If God has forgiven you and you have done whatever it is that he needs for you to do in order for you to be blameless, I don't care how much blame somebody try to give to you, it does not matter because God didn't give it to you. I think one of the things that I see that really bothers me a lot is when, um, say, a, a woman and a man is in a relationship and he cheats, but you stay as the or he cheat or she cheats, man, and they stay together. Um, but, and I, I can speak on it cause I walked it, but y'all stay together. He cheated or, uh, she cheated. It didn't matter. But one of the parties cheat in the relationship. You stay together. However, every time that person does something that cheated, now you chose to stay, but every time you won't allow them to redeem themselves or you won't allow them to be human, you won't allow them um, or, or give to them the grace because you want to hold them accountable for the pain. But at the end of the day, I don't care what they do or don't do because I walked it. And I'll be transparent. But I don't care what they do. Until you come to terms with whatever that thing is, you're going to always be angry. When I was married, yes, my ex-husband cheated. Um, but we stayed together. We stayed together every single day that I could. I'm talking about every time. I thought about it. I let him have it. I let him know what it was, when it could be, and how he did it. I won't, uh, the Lord was working on me, y'all. But I'm just saying, um, anytime I felt hurt, I withheld sex. I withheld a lot of things. Because you cheated, you don't deserve it, right? Um, but I stayed, though. Because God honor my, look, God honor marriage. But anytime he attempted to do anything different, I rejected him. I wouldn't even give him the chance to be, uh, to redeem itself. Because he, in my mind, it won't go make no sense because I was just that hurt. And I remember us getting into an argument one time and he says, Look, I've already apologized. What you want me to do? You're not going to keep putting me in this place, Rhonda. And I'm like, what? But it, it stopped me. Because, and from that day to this one, up until the day he died, I never mentioned anything about the discretion that he did, about him cheating um, the way he did, because he was right. If I chose to stay, then it was my responsibility to walk through that place of forgiveness. And it don't sound good all the time, but I'm just telling you the truth. Because it doesn't make sense to stay in a relationship where you're not going to make an effort and then say, God fix it. Both parties have a responsibility in it. But that goes along with forgiving yourself and forgiving others. And then choosing to think on the things that are above. And that's when you create that environment that helps foster that growth and helps foster that that um the that growth and development that you want to have that helps foster that new per that new um personality that new identity that you are developing within yourself you have to create the boundaries to protect that 
I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what nobody did. I don't care how they did it. I don't care what anybody thought they knew when. It doesn't matter. When you have when you have walked through this process and you are finally okay with you, they can remember when all they want to. But when don't mean nothing when it comes to who you are right now. And you create that environment. So if you go into a family member's house for the holidays and they want to say, well, I remember when you were doing such and such, but that's not who I am now. And then you have a right. To either stay and create the boundary or leave and create the boundary and not feel any kind of guilt, not feel any kind of anything behind it because that's your right. When you have done, it's almost like when you go to prison, when people go to prison. They go to prison, they do their time, they come out into society and society attempts to hold them. Um, it's like they try to punish them again for something that they've already done their time for. That's not what it is. When you have walked through those steps, then you have the right to create the environment without shame, without guilt, without feeling like you owe somebody something, without feeling like you have to continuously pay this debt so that somebody else feels okay or comfortable. Those days are over. You do everything that you can do to the best of your ability, and then you put it into the hands of the Lord. You put it in his hands anyway to begin with, but you do what he leads you to do and do what you know to do to the best of your ability. But that guilt and that condemnation and that shame and all of that stuff, that's ridiculous, and that's unnecessary. That's not even something that you have to walk into. So I'm going to recap these um, tips for those who are just coming on. And you can also go back and watch the replay. Um, but in order for you to, to overcome your past, uh, the first tip is accept that you, can, you cannot change the past. It's not in your power. The past is already done. Accept it. Uh, if you got to ask somebody for forgiveness, ask them for forgiveness. And then you keep it moving. Number two. You got to examine truth versus fantasy. If you're looking back on your past, are you seeing it through the eyes of truth or are you seeing it through fantasy? Are you looking at that old person like there's something that they're not when y'all broke up? Are you looking at your past through rose-colored glasses or are you magnifying your past to where it was 10 times worse than it actually was? Or are you looking at it through truth? Um, the next thing, tip three. Give yourself permission to grieve the past. Everybody has to have that um, period where they detach from what was so that they can accept what is. So give yourself that time and permission to be able to grieve that thing that you thought was in your past. Number four, forgive yourself and others. Stop drinking poison. Unforgiveness is not cute. When you hold unforgiveness in your heart, as Joyce Meyer said, it's like drinking poison waiting for the other person to die. It's not cute. You mean, you nasty, and don't nobody want to be around you. Forgive. Forgive yourself. Forgive other people. You are not doing anybody a favor by holding unforgiveness. You are making it so that you will not have any friends eventually. So deal with it. Um, and number four, um, number five, the last thing is set your mind on things that are above. So I want you to think about um, how you can do better. Think about growing as a person and creating the environment that you want to live. Creating the environment that you want to live. Creating the environment that you want to live. That's what you want to do. I just want to say this. I just got a post that said, do you want to tag Jesse Barnes in this video? I take that as my brother is looking out for me. And he loves me. Um, so, yeah. So, overcoming the past. That's what you got to do. Um, so, if anybody has any questions or comments, I will give you guys a few minutes to do this, you guys really had some um, great comments um, about overcoming the past. I really hope um, that this is something that you guys can go back over and read. I mean, go back over and watch. Um, because it's important. In order for you to walk into your new place, you have to overcome some old things um, that you have been through. And we've all been through something. But forgiveness of yourself and others is really key. To being able to walk in any situation in freedom. But, so what I want to do is, thank all, thank you. I miss you too, Chloe. I'm going to come out and see y'all soon, I promise. Um, but yeah, so what I want to do really is just pray for you guys really quickly. And after that, I will see you guys next Tuesday.
Um, if you have any suggestions about any topics uh, that you want to hear or talk about, please um, message them to me. Also, like I said before, um, I will be releasing my two interactive journals. I'm going to be re-releasing them in January. So one is Let the Rivers of Living Water Flow. That is an interactive journal that teaches you how to hear the voice of the Lord for yourself. Um, also, I have um, the Once and For All Breakthrough Journal. So this is a journal that helps you um, get breakthrough in certain areas of your life. But we'll talk more about that as we go. Also, um, I have another course that will be coming out um, at the end of February, which I will be talking to you about um, as we go as well. But I will be here every Tuesday at 9 o'clock. So again, if you have any kind of topics that you want to hear, questions, concerns, you can comment here. You can also be a part of the Wusa Sister Circle page. So if you are a woman and you are looking for a community of women where you can grow, learn, and get real, and just breathe Wusa, whoo, um, you can go to my website, www.rondasbarnes.org, O-R-G, and sign up for the Wusa Sister Circle page. Um, it's a lot going on, y'all. I'm coaching again, too, so um, you can see the coaching information up there as well. Send me a message if you are looking for a breakthrough in different areas like fear and procrastination. Um, if you get intimidated going into um, new areas, it'll be 9 o'clock. Um, Chloe, if you get intimidated, I can remember going through a period where I was around predominantly uh, male uh, corporate environment. And for some reason, every time I got into the environment, it was like I couldn't say anything. I'm like, I know, goodness, well, I got a lot to say. Um, and so I kind of walked through that place. So I help people overcome intimidation and fear and a whole slew of things. Um, if you need breakthrough, I'm your girl. So you can look at all of that stuff on my website as well. But thank you guys again for joining me. Let me pray for you guys really quickly. Lord, I just thank you and I praise you right now in the name of Jesus for everyone who will um, watch this replay and for everyone who is currently on um, watching this live. God, I thank you for the lives. I thank you that you have appointed them to be on this scope for this time. And so, Lord, I just ask that you will begin to go into the deep places of their hearts to bring healing to those places in the past that may have been disappointed, that may have, uh, where they may have had some misunderstanding, God. Give them courage to be able to forgive themselves and others. God, download strategies of how to maneuver in this new place of forgiveness and walking into the new thing that you are doing in this time. God, I just thank you for being with them, covering them, even and now as they go throughout their days. Father, we honor you for your faithfulness. We thank you because you are intentional in everything that you do. God, we thank you for your love, your mercy, and compassion that you show towards us every single day. In Jesus' name, amen. So thank you guys for watching. Have a great evening, and I will see you guys again next Tuesday at 9 o'clock. Good night.